Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the Soap Studios Dark Knight Trilogy Batman. This is Batman played by Christian Bale. This is a 112th scale cloth soft goods action figure. So let's go and check out the packaging here. As you can see at the top, DC, Dark Knight Trilogy, Batman 80th Year Anniversary by Soap Studios. And here is the Dark Knight Batman. One side of the package, Batman 112 scale action figure. The other side, Soap Studios, Dark Knight Trilogy. The bottom, there's a bunch of credits. And then on the back, the Dark Knight Trilogy with the city behind. And there's a barcode in case that helps anybody. So with no further ado, let's open them up. And I did end up getting two of these figures. One of which to open and enjoy, the other to keep unopened in my complete 6 and 7 inch Batman related unopened action figure collection. Here he is with the cardboard sleeve removed. This is the DX edition of the figure. And here's the back side. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out, and he comes with quite a bit of stuff. He has a display stand two capes, one of which is wired, an alternate head with the sonar vision, an alternate mouth that should work with either head, he's got his mask removed, three bombs, three batarangs, ten alternate hands, totaling twelve interchangeable hands, his glider pack, his sticky gun, his grapnel launcher, a Batman 80th anniversary pin, and thankfully an instruction book for all of this. But before we take a look at the accessories, Let's take a look at the actual figure. So this is the Dark Knight Trilogy Batman, played by Christian Bale. It's been a while since we've gotten some Dark Knight Trilogy figures, and the first time we ever got a cloth a soft goods type figure. Starting off with the head and helmet, I think it looks fantastic. Very movie accurate. I like the brow, the eyes, the mouth. It definitely screams Christian Bale to me. Liking it so far. Moving further down, he's got this armor on top of this sort of rubber and sort of cloth suit. You can see the armor pieces made of plastic on the top. Then we've got a sort of rubbery bendable material under there. It kind of stretches. The texturing is pretty nice. It looks good. I don't like how you can sort of push in here. The body's not sort of filling that in. It feels worse than it looks. It looks fantastic if you ask me. The different colors of the armor plates here. Belt looks great. There's articulation under here. It's soft goods moves pretty nicely. Feels like double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Looks like we're gonna be able to clip stuff on the back of his belt. He looks very good for a Dark Knight trilogy Batman, but there's a few things that are annoying me. Big time this. You can see the flesh skin, his wrists are casted in, and why would they ever do that? You would not see Batman's wrists sticking between his armor here. That should be black under there. Really, really hurts the aesthetic. I mean, I think it's this part that's getting pulled up and you can kind of push it back down, his gauntlet here. But just really takes me out of the figure seeing that. His ankles are the same way, can't see it too much. But if you bend them, he's got that flesh color inside of there. Really dumb move to cast it like that. So this is not the first Soap Studio figure that I got. I got the League of Shadows pack and I was a little bit disappointed. I thought they were inferior to Mezco and more expensive. This guy was jam-packed full of accessories and looked really good. I also am planning to get the tumbler, so I wanted my Batman to go with that. So, let's keep digging into the figure. And I just wanted to point out, look at this guy's armor. On the breastplates, there's just so much detail there. We got the bat symbol on the front. Different texturing on the cloth parts, on the arms. Ab plates look fantastic. This is a very visually well done Dark Knight Batman. And then here he is, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories. And let's start off with the boring stuff, his display stand. Now let's check out his display stand. It comes in three separate pieces. And once it's fully assembled, it'll look about like this. The display base here, it says Dark Knight Trilogy. Batman, bottom's kind of hollow, and then it has a sort of flight stand up here. Transparent pole, can rotate at the bottom, hinged at the bottom, hinged above that, 
hinge yet again above that, and it can rotate, and then you have this clamp that'll be able to hold your figure. Then you've got this gold looking pin. This is to commemorate Batman's 80th anniversary. That was in 2019. It looks pretty good. You can see old school Batman on the front here, 80 years on the back. It's got this little piece you can remove and wear it as a pin. I'm not much of a pin guy, but it is a pretty nice piece. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of 12 of them. But before we check those out, I wanted to point out that his wrist gauntlet armor is removable. I think that's a very cool feature. You can just sort of slide it off there. It'd be very nice if he was taking the bat suit off piece by piece. He could have this on a little workstation next to him. Pretty cool. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And when changing out the hands, I was able to pull his sleeves down a little bit, covering up his fleshy wrists. Problem solved. Then, with some semi-open, sort of regular hands, I would not describe these as gripping hands, although they could probably really hold something large. And now we've got these open hands. I would describe these as some grabbing or throwing hands. They'd probably look pretty good typing out the computer behind him as well. And these are his trigger figure hands. They're probably going to hold his grapnel launcher. Then he's got these semi-open gripping hands. And he has another pair of gripping hands. These have a smaller grip. Now let's look at his heads and mouths. So first of all, he has two identical necks. He has two different heads that will attach on top of the necks. The one on the left has regular eyes, and the one on the right has a sonar eyes. And he also has two interchangeable chins or mouths. One has his mouth shut, and one, he's got his teeth exposed, kind of gritting his teeth. And that thing in the middle is used to poke the different chins out of the heads. Here's his first regular head with the regular eyes, and what I would consider his most normal chin with the mouth shut. And here's his standard head with the angry mouth. And here's his alternate head with the sonar eyes with the normal mouth. If you take a light and shine it against the head, you can see the eyes light up. Looks pretty cool. And here's the sonar head with the angry mouth. And in case anyone was curious how you swap out the mouths, you simply take the head here, remove it from the neck. On the inside of the sort of chin area, you see that white little hole. Take this device here, press it through that little hole. Mouth is going to pop right off. Now let's look at his capes. One of them is wired, one is not. They are both giant and massive. They've got these little clamps at the top that are going to connect to the figure. Here's the cape completely stretched out. It is huge. Don't forget the Dark Knight Trilogy. He uses his cape to glide around Gotham City. Very, very pleased with the way it flows, the way it moves. Then you have this other one here. This one has a wire, so you're going to be able to give it different poses. Here's Batman wearing his first cape. This is one without the wire. As you can see, it just flows to the side. It flows okay, a little bit flat, and I can see some of the wrinkles in it. A little bit distracting. Overall, it looks pretty cool. And the way the cape attaches, it doesn't stay on very securely. It come off easily. So these little holes on his shoulders and the armor here. And there's this clamp on the cape. Pretty much take this clamp, slide it down in those holes, and this back part will secure its way in there. It stays, but it can't come off with ease. And here's Batman with this wired cape. This thing has, I believe, four wires in it. They're very thin. They won't be able to hold that much weight. You can see it's sort of flowing behind him. Of course, you could have it as if the wind is going, going to the same direction. You could have it both going to the different sides. I'll tell you, the wire's poking out of here, and that is bothering the hell out of me. You can see that copper wire on the back. It does have two or three more wires in the middle, so you could have this whole cape sort of sticking upward. Whatever you wanted to do with it. I personally prefer the other cape, as it's going to hang down a little more naturally. But you might be able to get this one into a gliding pose. You can use a combination of the wire and his arms to have the cape outstretched like he's gliding in the Dark Knight Trilogy. Just look how much of the wire is sticking out on both sides. Bad quality control soap studios. Now let's look at his glider pack. He'll wear this without the cape on. In the film when he was at Hong Kong on the building, he had this on his back, jumped off, and the cape deployed. 
And here's Batman with the glider pack attached. Can't really tell from the front, but if you spin this guy around. Now let's look at his cowl, his mask, or arguably his helmet. This thing's pretty cool. The detail's nice. It doesn't have a face in there. It's like he just took his mask off. Now what doesn't really make sense is he doesn't have an unmasked head, so there's really no appropriate way for him to be holding this. The mask here looks very nice on a table in the Batcave, but you don't have that unmasked Batman at the computer next to it, so there's really no appropriate way to ever display this with this figure. He can hold the mask under his arm, but like I said before, it doesn't really make sense without an unmasked head. Now let's look at his Batarangs. They're small, they're gold, he has three of them. On one side, it's got this risen area here, that's where you'd fold it. And then the other side, it's completely flat. Here he is holding one of the Batarangs. Now let's look at his little bombs. I remember Batman using these in Batman Begins, and John Blake using these in The Dark Knight Rising. They're essentially little spheres with little spikes sticking out. Pretty nice detail. I like it. They even have a little red button to activate them on the other side. Here's Batman holding one of the bombs. Now let's look at a sticky gun. In the Dark Knight, he used this thing. It would fire some sticky residue with an explosive inside of it. He could send it for any amount of time he'd like. In the film, it would sort of crank each time he would pump the back to fire another shot. Looks pretty good. You can see where he'd hold it here and back here. This is the closest you can get him to hold it the right way, with one hand on the trigger finger and the other on the pump, so he essentially cannot actually hold it the way he held it in the film. He looks decent holding it with one hand, but that is not how it's done in the film. Then we have this grapnel launcher. This thing is gold, has some black and some silver on it. It looks pretty good. And here's Batman holding the grapnel launcher. He can also attach this thing onto the back of his belt, which is a very cool feature. Here's an accessory he did not come with. This weapon came with a cowman, and I don't really know why. This is Batman's EMP disruptor from The Dark Knight Rises. It's from a scene that Catwoman is not in and didn't have anything to do with. I guess it's just an extra pack of for Batman since Catwoman didn't come with all this stuff. It's all black, has some nice sculpting detail, a little bit of silver at the front there. And here he is holding the disruptor. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, sitting at about 6.25 inches tall, which is going to translate to a hair under 16 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 6.3 inches tall. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. You can look up and down just a little bit there. He has articulation at the top of the neck, the base of the head, and it can also move at the bottom of the neck. Shoulders on a ball joint. It goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. You can see this is where it starts to stretch the material. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a bicep cut inside of there. His elbows are double jointed, going about this far. and They hold the pose nicely. His wrist here, it's on a ball joint, can rotate and is hinged as well. In his torso here, it's kind of mushy a little bit where the armor is. It can rotate, it looks like some kind of ball joint here, go forward and back. And at the waist, rotate around, also go forward and back, looks like another ball joint here. Legs, only go out about this far, the crotch area is a little bit lower than I'd like, can't stretch out too much. Forward, about that far. Back, pretty much not at all. He does have some rotation in the thigh area. Looks like double jointed knees. He can rotate here, but it's not articulation, it's just that armor piece. Then his ankle goes forward and back. Can't rotate, can't tilt the tiniest bit. Now some of his articulation works very good, and some does not. His elbows and knees aren't too bad. You're not gonna fully get to utilize the double jointed features, but his thighs and his shoulders are very limited from the outfit there. It stretches and it kind of bounces into place, really interfering from utilizing the articulation that's under there. Here's Batman doing some research in the Batcave. We have the Mattel Michael Caine Alfred serving him some tea. And then Batman goes to get the Batpod and patrol through the city. 
Here's Batman on top of a building using a sticky gun. And he's getting ready to glide off the building. He's got his glider pack on here. Gonna deploy his cape. And then he gets to glide through the rooftops of Gotham City. Here's Batman next to the tumbler, cleaning up some trash from the liquor store. Now let's check him out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Soap Studios figures. Here's my entire collection of Dark Knight Trilogy Soap Studios figures. I believe the only one I'm missing is the Joker. From left to right, we've got Bruce Wayne and his League of Shadows training attire, Ra's al Ghul, a League of Shadows ninja, Batman, Two-Face, and Catwoman. I seem to recall a long time ago, Soap Studios teasing a Nurse Joker and a Bruce Wayne figure. I hope they eventually come out. Now let's check him out, next to some Dark Knight Trilogy figures from different various companies. Here he is with the largest Dark Knight figures that I have. These are some 7 inch scale NECA figures. Although they don't make the same Dark Knight Batman in this suit, here he is next to the Batman Begins, Batman and the Joker. Then, next to some Mayfax Dark Knight figures, we've got the Dark Knight Batman 1.0, then 2.0, then the Soap Studios Batman, then the Mayfax Dark Knight Batman 3.0, and the Jail Cell Joker. These Soap Studio figures do scale up pretty nice with the Mayfax figures. And here, Next is some Mattel, Movie Master, Dark Knight Trilogy, Batman figures. Then, next is some SH Figure Arts, Dark Knight Trilogy figures. And here, next is some Hot Toys, 6 inch scale, Dark Knight Trilogy figures. As a whole, I'd say he's one of the better looking Dark Knight Batman figures. His armor probably looks better on the Soap Studios figure than any of the other Dark Knight figures. But I'd say he is not as good as a Mayfix 3.0 Batman or the SH Figure Arts Batman. Just a lot of issues with this guy between the articulation, limbs falling out, etc, etc. Here's this Batman taking his rightful spot with the rest of my Dark Knight Trilogy Batman figures. This is a large DVD display I got from the store many years ago. Actually hangs out in the bathroom of my Batman action figure room. Each shelf with some different themed Dark Knight figures. All the different varieties of Mattel Movie Master Batman. Then all my quote unquote nice Dark Knight Batman figures. Mayfix, SH Figure Arts, Soap Studios, NECA, Hot Toys. Then the Bane Shelf. And then all the other miscellaneous villains. Now let's check them out. Next is some Dark Knight Trilogy vehicles. Here he is next to the Mattel 5 inch scale basic tumbler. Now they don't actually have very many tumblers for the 6 inch scale figures. Soap Studios has one and they're re-releasing it soon, but that thing is crazy expensive. This Batman is not going to fit in this tumbler as he's a 6 inch scale figure and this vehicle is intended for 5 inch scale figures. Here he is next to a bunch of different Bat Pods. I have the Bat Pods from Mattel, SH Figure Arts, and Matefax. And I must say, this guy does not fit on them very well. Just the restrictions from his suit prevents him from really getting that sort of laying down pose on top of the bike. Here he is, next to the Hot Toys 112th scale, the Bat. This is a giant, greatly detailed vehicle. This is a two-seater vehicle. It's kind of difficult to get Batman into the cockpit, but if you remove the computer, he fits in there pretty good. And let's see how he scales up with some other cloth, soft goods, action figure lines. Here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next to a Felix Toys Joker and Patriot Studios Arthur Fleck. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. I'll start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work my way smaller, and I'll include as many Batman figures as possible during these comparisons. Here he is, next to some DST, or Diamond Select Toys. And here he is, next to some McFarlane, DC Multiverse, Batman figures. Then, next to some DC Direct, and DC Collectibles, Batman figures. And, next to some NECA, Batman figures. Then, next to some Mattel, Wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco, 112th Cloth Soft Goods, Batman figures. Then, Next is some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse Batman figures. And here, 
next to some Mafex Batman figures, then next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends, and here he is next to some SH Figure Arts Batman figures, and finally next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a very nice looking Batman figure. The armor looks excellent, the face sculpt, the cape, but its functionality leaves a lot to be desired. His articulation is good, but the suit prohibits some of it, and it bounces some of it back. There are some things that bother me about the figure. His flesh-colored wrists. Sometimes when handling the figure, his head will fall off easily. Then you mess around and put it back. The cape, the clips are awful. The thing falls out so easy. And you're trying to put all that back together, then the hands fall out. It can be quite a bit frustrating. His accessories are absolutely amazing. Those things look great and are movie accurate. So overall, I hate to say it, if I'm going to rate this figure, I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10, a lot lower than I was hoping to give him. He looks gorgeous, is a great display piece, but as far as functionality and playability, he scores kind of low. He can't even hold some of the accessories properly. His arms don't really move exactly all the different ways I'd like him to. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.